All right, today let's talk Ultimatum. Over the last couple of days, I've been experimenting with and playing and trying out Ultimatum. I've heard really good things about Ultimatum and I was really on the fence about it. You know, I've got a lot of friends who only do Ultimatum um, and they, they love it. And I always thought Ultimatum was really boring. I never understood the idea of standing in a circle and I've been proven time and time and wrong again that Ultimatum is actually really good. Now, I was recently hanging out with my buddy Jesse and a big shout out to him because none of this would be possible if he didn't convince me to do this. And pretty much he was just like, hey man, check out what I'm doing. And I'm playing this really cool build and I'm just ultimatum farming. And I was like, ultimatum, that's boring as hell. And he's like, dude, a lot of people like it. And I thought about people like Shoto and other people in the community who are also doing ultimatum. And they say it's absolutely out of this world fantastic. And I didn't believe it. So I went out and tried it. Well, Jesse plays this build and he blows up the screen and he does his ultimatum and he five to one's a bunch of stuff and there's a Reddit post and this and that. And I was just like, I sat there and I was bewildered. So over the last couple of days, I've, I've done ultimatum and it has been, honestly, the, the words, the words are, are hard to come by. And I didn't know, and I didn't and know what to expect. And I did a bunch of things and I tried it out and then I hit this really cool mirror rare item and it sold for hundreds of divines and i was i was hooked i was i was absolutely positively hooked and i couldn't believe it uh, i was hooked out of my world so essentially what we're doing because i know i like to yap and if you just let me go i'll keep yapping forever but essentially what we're doing is we're running an atlas tree that looks like this and there'll be a link to this down below and pretty much all we're doing is we're taking all of the ultimatum nodes as we want ultimatum to spawn and we want to make sure that we do ultimatum as easy as possible and we take map effect modifier so we take all the ultimatum nodes and all the map effect modifier nodes because i've been told and please if you know correct me if i'm wrong or if you have ideas is that the map modifiers affects the amount of stuff in the ultimatum and this will all make sense in a minute so we take all the ultimatum nodes we take all the beyond nodes i took the beyond nodes you don't need the beyond nodes i know jesse is taking uh june nodes and some other people are taking different nodes so all of the beyond nodes are up to you you could put those and do whatever you want with them i like beyond for when doing the ultimatum and getting a bunch of beyond stuff but we take all of the ultimatum nodes we the only one we don't take is we don't want stone circles we don't want to deal with the stone circle stuff we just don't want to deal with that we take everything else for ultimatum except for me i'm not taking uniques as far as this goes i'm only taking increased currency and increase divination i've actually been contemplating dropping the divination but you actually see divine beauties quite often and other really cool cards so you keep them also as far as like our atlas tree goes we take excuse me val side areas because if you do find a val side area you alk it corrupt it and you can get it adorned so that's really cool but essentially as far as the map goes and what we're doing is i'm rolling my map so i'm i'm going in i'm grabbing a map you know, whatever layout that you want to do, whatever layout that you're comfortable with, whatever layout allows you to get to the ultimatum fast enough. Where it is? Do I not have a strand? There we go. Pretty much whatever allows you to get to the ultimatum as fast as possible. We're chiseling, we're alking, we're valing if we can, and we're running our maps. I personally prefer to run eight modded maps because they give you more, from what I've been told, more loot. Now, essentially what happens is, is when we do our ultimatum, we're using the scarab that gives us the idea that we've completed two additional rounds. So our loot, we use two of these. We'll start as though we are round five on round one. So you get more loot. So pretty much what this means is when you start an ultimatum, you start on round one, but the rewards will start and track as though you are around five. So your rewards will be better. From there, we're converting all of our rewards to catalyst. I have been told that catalysts scale in two ways. They scale based off of how hard the map is by the amount of effects on the map, and they scale based upon what round you're on. So by starting on round five, our catalysts are scaled up way higher. And then from there, we're converting all of our catalysts to inscribed ultimatums. And we'll talk about inscribed ultimatums in a few minutes. As far as cost per map goes, these are pretty cheap. They're about 162 a divine at this time of recording. The turn everything into inscribed ultimatums are about 102 divines. This one to turn everything into a catalyst, these are about a half a divine each. So every map that you run costs you roughly about a half a divine. And I don't know, I think it's worth it. I like it a lot. The only downside to doing this 
there's two downsides to doing this. Downside number one is you need a character that is really strong to survive the ultimatums. Losing the ultimatums means that you are just losing profit and nobody likes losing profit. So if your character dies during the ultimatum, you pretty much are not, you know, you're not making pro, you know, you're, you're losing money. So you don't want to die during the ultimatum. Also leaving the ultimatum, the only time that you don't get loot in the ultimatum is if you die or leave. So you want to make sure that you leave or you don't leave or die during the ultimatum. Now, as far as the map goes, um, all you're doing is you're opening a map. This is why strands are usually better or you're doing like a tall or something and you pretty much just you're sprinting through the whole map looking for the ultimatum. Once you find the ultimatum, you want to make sure that when you do this, you choose modifiers that your character can run without too much hassle. You want to make sure that you get through all 10 rounds. You don't want to risk dying and you want to try to get as many rewards as you can. Now, in terms of like rewards, you might want to look at the rewards um, simply due to the fact that you might want to leave early to guarantee that you get certain rewards because I had mentioned that if you die, you'll not get rewards, you'll lose rewards. Nobody likes losing rewards, but overall, pretty much you just want to make sure that you get through all 10 rounds of the ultimatum. And as you've been seeing so far, we've only been getting inscribed ultimatums. Now, ultimatums in themselves, depending on what build you're playing, can be relatively quick, they can be relatively short. Usually the ones that take a lot of time are the stand in stone circles ones. Those ones usually take a little bit of time to run. You see right now we're about a minute into this map. A lot of the time was scouting around the map looking for the ultimatum. But if you do a nice map like a tall strand, anything that runs in a straight line, you're pretty much good to go. As far as other things are concerned, uh, I have the ability or I'm taking Atlas progression because eventually you'll cl clear 28 maps. You'll kill the boss. You'll get an invitation. That's pretty cool. And overall, the build I'm playing, it's this is literally perfect for not needing to do anything. As far as this build is concerned, without the original sin, it's about 200 to 250 divines at the time of recording to put together. The only expensive part to the build is the mage blood. The original sin adds a lot of damage. I'm actually testing the original sin. I've tested with the original sin and without the original sin. I'm going to do another ultimatum right after this without the original sin on this way you guys can see the damage and how long they take and don't take and pretty much what i want to showcase and talk to you guys about is just like the amount of time that it takes you are spending time running these ultimatums so that you can get inscribed ultimatums because inscribed ultimatums are where your money's going to be now currently you've noticed the rewards in this one haven't been too good we haven't seen any big ticket items we haven't seen any divines yet and, you know, you feel kind of like, wow, that kind of sucks. Like, I'm spending half a divine a map. Where's the profit? What's the point in doing this? Why would I do this if I'm not constantly seeing returns per every map? And, well, the returns that you're seeing are actually there and you're not really realizing it. What Reddit has figured out, oh my god, and what other players have figured out is that inscribed ultimatums in themselves have another value to them and there was a really good reddit thread i have it handy i'm going to link it down below in the description and the reddit thread see this is why you have to be tanky enough to not die i don't even know what killed me but pretty much what it's talking about is as far as ultimatums are going that is that this one if we didn't die there would have given us about 10 inscribed ultimatums because we would have done 10 rounds and if you're lucky, your inscribed ultimatums will do. Why I died, I don't know. But this is my point of why you need a tanky build to not die or you need to not click mods. I think I clicked on the saw blades and the saw blades insta killed me, which I know better. But, you know, talking and recording doesn't help. But essentially what you're doing is, is you're running these maps now so that you can get these inscribed ultimatums. And you see in my inventory, I have a bunch of inscribed ultimatums. These are all bad. And none of these have maximum monster life on it. When I go to this row, you see I have more monster life. And when I go to this row, I have even more monster life. What the community has managed to figure out is, is if I vendor five to one of the same type, so not more monster life, and I redo this, I will get a new inscribed ultimatum. The same thing with this, the 30 percenters. And I'll get a new inscribed ultimatum. And then I'll do the same thing again with 70s. 
Now, the more monster life goes in a couple of breakpoints. There's no monster life, 30% monster life, 70% monster life, 120% monster life, and 200% monster life. And pretty much what happens is, is we know, based upon testing with maximum monster life, that there are tiers of rewards based upon the more maximum monster life. So this mirrorable rare item is always going to be a 200% more maximum monster life. 120% more maximum monster life will yield us eight divine rewards. 70% will yield us four divines. 30% like these will yield us one divine and no maximum monster life will yield us pretty much just 10 chaos orbs. The 0% maximum monster life, I haven't really found a reward that's been very good there in it yet. There's not really a whole lot of reason to do it. But the 30 percenters re-rolling them can give me chaos. They can give me divines. The 70 percenters can give us divines. The 120s can give us divines. And the 200s can give us the headhunters, the mage bloods, any tier zero unique. So they're really worth doing. There is a world where you gamble and you buy the 200 percenters and you redo them. But, you know, like this one, this 70 percenter, if I have six divine beauty cards, it'll just double. Now, essentially how these work and what these are is and i'll show you really quick is i will take these these will tell you what to do so this one says to survive and there'll be all these different modifiers on them and how these inscribed ultimatums work is i will take an inscribed ultimatum i will put it into my map device i will open it up i will go into the arena and then i will sacrifice my currency so i put my 20c here and then all I have to do is survive. Now, in theory, fingers crossed, the build that I'm playing based upon the mods that are on the map, I just stand here and nothing happens. We just survive, everything is right as rain. But there are times, there are mods, there are things that do go wrong, like you saw on the map that I just did. You can indeed die, you can indeed lose your rewards. It does feel bad, it does happen. And you just need to understand that if you were going to do this slot machine of a strategy, there are times where you will die. And I don't want to hide the fact from you that Ultimatum in itself is very difficult. It has been one of the harder farming strategies that I've tried. Even with a specialized build, I still make mistakes. I know friends who still make mistakes. And it is one of those things that usually you just have to pay a little bit more attention to, even though it's an AFK farm, you still have to make sure that you choose mods that don't brick what you're doing because it becomes very, very easy to brick in terms of what you're doing. Now, overall, Ultimatum itself has been very profitable. I have managed to buy tons of upgrades, tons of different things for my character. I've been able to farm tons of money with it. I hit a big ticket item with the 150. I see plenty of eights, plenty of six, or plenty of eights, plenty of fours, plenty of ones, and pretty much tons of these inscribed Ultimatums that you see. It took us a minute 20, we made 20 chaos. I don't have to worry about going out and trading. I can just make 40C, not a problem. And overall, the only thing that really takes long in terms of like these ultimatums when you're running them, especially inside of a map, is if you get bad mods. Now, if you're running eight mod maps, you wanna make sure that you do eight mod maps that aren't going to break your character alongside the ultimatum because map effect modifiers do make your map a little bit difficult. And the only Arc Nemesis mod that really makes Ultimatum a pretty much a pain in the butt is the one that the rare monster has, I think it's called Assassin, where like the rare monster will just like run away from you and then jump back on you and then run away from you and then jump back on you. He's a pain in the butt to deal with, like huge pain in the behind. And that's the only one that like takes a while. Otherwise, like as far as like doing these go, you know, as far as these go, like, you see right now, I took off the original Sin. This is Attacker Slain. Monsters are dying relatively quick. The only time that this build with original Sin, or the only time this build really needs original Sin is if you're really dabbling in like tier 17 maps. Now, one thing that I really wanna point out in terms of doing ultimatum and something that I haven't learned that me and my friend Jesse have been laughing about. It is okay to walk away with rewards. It is okay. In that one that I died, I should have walked away. I should have taken it at round nine or round eight when I died, taking my rewards, seeing the saw blades and leaving. But being a little bit of greed, talking to you guys, hanging out, trying to showcase a little bit, I wasn't paying attention and I suffered for it and I died. And as long as you don't be greedy and walk away with rewards, you should be okay. 
Now, as far as inscribed ultimatums go, they do sell on the trade site. You can get a pretty penny for them. The eight divine ones, if I don't want to run them and I don't want to risk them, I sell them for six. I don't think about it. I don't worry about it. They sell almost instantly. The one divine ones, I list them for a half a div. Usually somebody buys them eventually. The four div ones, I list for three or two. I don't think about it. I just set them and forget it. Now this one, this round's a little greedy. I probably should have walked away. I didn't have a lot of really good rewards, but I mean, you know, Oh, I can't walk away from that. That's a 70% more monster life. So this is round 10. You can see if I check out the rewards, you see we have 10 rewards here. So something duplicated. What duplicated? The gentleman duplicated. And you see looking at this, this one's crap. This one's crap. This one's crap. This one's crap. This is a 30 percenter. This one's crap. This is a 70. This is a 30. This is a 70. So you can see that you are indeed getting rewards that are good. You do see you get a bunch of 70s, you get a bunch of 30s, you'll get a bunch of 120s. And the only one that's pretty rare is the 200. So look, I got greedy. I got greedy. If I fail, it's because I got greedy and I called it. If I fail, I got greedy. Should have taken it and walked away. Should have taken it and walked away. Don't be greedy when doing these. All that currency, I mean, it wasn't really anything. You no, know, whatever. I should have walked away. But that's my point. My point is you can do these. These are fine. These are great. These are a really good time. But if you're like me and you're a little greedy and you openly say you're greedy and you lose, don't come yell at me because I warned you. <laughs> don't come yell at me because I warned you. Now, if I were to just do a map and go grab, just say a strand map, and I were to chisel it, alk it, not do it eight modded and just go run it, not eight modded, it would be a lot easier and it wouldn't be anywhere near as stressful or anywhere near as hard. It would just be a lot simpler. The problem is, is from testing and hanging out with other people doing ultimatum, they have noticed that the overall reward pool feels less when you're not doing an eight modded map. I actually tested a bunch of tier 17 maps and I don't know if tier 17 is worth the risk and hassle without having like insane gear to do it. But overall, like, if you can't do eight modded maps and you could do the, you know, like, the regular non eight modded maps, like the fours and the sixes, you'll still make out and you'll still be okay. You just won't have as many opportunities for more 70s and 120s. So I have been told. That can be proven wrong. You guys can know better. If somebody does know or does have the source for it, please link it down below. I'll happily pin the comments so other people can see it themselves. But you see right away while running this, non eight modded it's a lot easier it's a lot less stressful you don't really have to worry and the same rules still apply if you feel that your build is a little bit on the weaker side or you feel that you're getting a little bit too greedy or you have tons of rewards just walk away just absolutely 100 percent of the time walk away and i don't want to hide that from you i don't want to hide the fact that ultimatum is hard ultimatum is difficult even with the afk build you still run the risk of dying. You still run the risk of failing. You can click bad mods. You can have bad mods on your eight mod maps. And, you know, things happen. But if you're, you know, if you take your time, you look it through, you pay attention, you make sure you know what you're clicking and you make sure you roll your maps really well, the idea of dying becomes less and less. Now, when you run the inscribed ultimatums, it's the same thing. Double and triple check the mods. Stalking rune will ruin you you will just die if you're not careful. Saw blades will kill you. Skulls will kill you. You need to make sure and you need to test and you need to learn what your build can do. One of the ways that I tested this build uh, was by honestly, without having the really expensive scarab in, I just did a bunch of ultimatums and I just clicked and I took note of when I died. Click this, died, yes, wrote down what mod I clicked when I died because it's only at this point the mods that are killing me and a really good fizz hit. A really good fizz hit is killing me too, which I learned. But you should take some time, learn what mods you can do, learn what mods you can't do, and pretty much go from there. Don't rush ultimatum. Ultimatum can be done really fast. The only time that ultimatum goes relatively slow, you see each one of our maps that we did today is about two or three minutes. The only time it goes bad is when you have that weird, oh, look, a 120. The only time it goes bad is when you have that weird assassin guy who just like runs away from you. 
Oh, and the only time it goes bad too is when you're greedy and die. So don't do that. But otherwise, friends, I hope you guys try Ultimatum. I really like it a lot. It's probably what I'm going to do and farm until I'm at Original Sin myself and I don't have to use or borrow the one that I'm borrowing. And this is, this is going to be my plan. Now, one really cool thing to note, and I'm going to leave you on this one. If you bring in a friend, you see, we did this Ultimatum. We got 11. We got 11. If I bring in a friend and I run the map with a friend, each one of us gets inscribed Ultimatums. We each get different rewards. So one Scarab and two friends would get double the reward. So assuming nothing doubles, assuming nothing doubles, each time you run in an ultimatum, it would give you 10 rewards. With two people, it would give you 20. With three people, it would give you 30. With four people, it would give you 40. With five people, it would give you 50. And with six people, it would give you 60. Now, that is what I've been told. I haven't tested it, but that is what I've been told. And that's what I know that a lot of groups are doing. So if you have friends and you want to play and you're doing it and you got a homie, and he doesn't die, or they don't die, or they're an Orbop, and you run it together, you will double up on your inscribed ultimatum, or triple up, or quadruple up, or six sex tuple up. I think that's six. But anyways, I'm gonna leave you with that. And for now, have a wonderful evening. So long, farewell, Avita, and I'll see you guys in the next one.